Hey guys, Brandon Harvey here. And before we get started today, I wanted to tell you about a very important survey we're conducting here at Sounds Good. And we'd really like for you to participate. The survey is anonymous, it won't take much time, and it will help us learn more about you, no matter how long you've been a listener or how frequently you listen to the show. So please take a few minutes and go to gradient.is slash podcast survey and let us know what you think. Again, that's gradient.is slash P-O-D-C-A-S-T S-U-R-V-E-Y. All right, now here's the show. Hello, hello, Brandon Harvey here with this week's episode of Sounds Good, the podcast where every single Monday I sit down with an inspiring person and talk about happiness, overcoming struggles, and living a life of intentionality and wonder. This episode is going to be so much fun because I'm talking with one of my favorite people, someone I'm proud to call a friend, Brad Montague. If you've seen Kid President videos, you've seen Brad's work. Brad and his little brother-in-law, Robbie, who plays Kid President, started making beautiful, optimistic videos on YouTube a few years back, and they've just blown up. Brad is an exceptional human being and spreads joy and childlike wonder through everything he does. I'm really excited to share our conversation together. So let's just jump straight into this. I am in the studio today with the amazing Brad Montague. Brad, welcome to the podcast. I'm so excited. Sounds good. So Brad, you and I just ate delicious burgers here in Nashville. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, And, you know, you and I have known each other for a few years now. I've been a fan of you for years, but we first met for the very first time in Seattle, Washington. Where we were Bollywood dancing. Wait, no, no, no. Do you remember this? We met before Bollywood dancing. So you and I met in Seattle at Bob Goff's conference. That's right. Backstage. Backstage. You were the kid with the camera. I was the kid with the camera. <laughs> and and that's the very first time we met. That's and then, right. And then maybe a year and a half later, you and I were both at another conference in Portland, Oregon. Mm-hmm. And there was a Bollywood dancing session at the conference <laughs> and you and I Bollywood danced together. And I think that's what solidified our friendship. We knew then in there that neither of us had rhythm. Yeah. But we had soul. <laughs> that's a whole lot of soul. Yeah. A yeah. whole lot of soul. <laughs> and I just want to say that every time that I'm with you, I feel more happy and refreshed. <laughs> and when I was going through this week and figuring out like what kind of questions do I want to ask Brad? Um, I was like, well, I kind of want to talk to him for like five hours. And so uh, it's really hard to whittle all of this down to, uh, to like one ish. Oh, we can talk for five hours and then the podcast will just be edited down. That's a good point. Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah. We'll turn this into a slumber party. Yeah. Yeah. I'll get the ice cream and the sadness. Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. During the process of trying to figure out what I wanted to ask you, I didn't even know where to start because you do so much and I love all of it. And so there's this thing that Elizabeth Gilbert says where Mm. she says start in the middle and and go both ways and I do whatever Elizabeth Gilbert says oh me too and so I figured let's start in the middle and go both ways I want to start with kid president though yeah tell me about how kid president started how it began because I know that it totally turned your life upside down in a lot of ways sure it did it it was so wild because we had been working with young people junior high and high school students And we had been working with them with this service learning camp that my wife and I had created. So we were around all of these these really bright, creative kids who were doing things like building wells in Africa and creating beauty pageants for men and women with special needs and doing these just remarkable things. And we would leave being with these kids and see online that people were sharing stories that were... um, hopeless, that were sad, that were frightening. Um, It was in the midst of an election, actually. And I just remember commenting to my wife, it'd be really great if people would listen to these amazing stories kids are doing instead of this junk that we're just arguing about and um, writing opinion pieces about opinion pieces and just going back and forth. 
So we have this little idea that what if, what if a kid were in charge? What if we actually listened to kids? And um, what might that look like? And so my little brother-in-law, we thought, well, let's put him in his Easter suit and <laughs> have him pretend to be president. And so we had this little record player and made it as a desk and got some cardboard left over from our camp. And I made a little video and it was just, what would it be like if you were president? And he started dancing. And, and then I asked him to say some advice to grownups. And he just said, uh, hey, be nice, get off Facebook. And I thought, that's pretty good. <laughs> that's pretty good. And uh, never thinking that it would go beyond just this little, uh, this little experiment. And we cut together three videos from he and I just playing around. And the reaction was, was at first people laughing, but it was a little deeper than that. It mm. was people were using the videos almost like a card you'd send to a friend. They were using, and, and they were, they were silly, but they were finding the sincerity in it. They were finding me- the meaning in it and that there was a little something deeper that they needed and they wanted to share. So he and I had fun making it and we just kept doing it and we've continued and, mm. and found, a, found it to be a, a wild ride for our whole family. It's incredible. I, and I love it. I was binging Kid President videos last night and somehow there, there were ones I hadn't seen and I was like, how have I not seen this? These are so good. But... <laughs> I would imagine a lot of people wonder this, like how much of Kid President is Robbie and how much of Kid President is Brad? Yeah, it's so much of what is said in the videos are things that I've been saying forever, like uh, that were in speeches I gave in fifth grade Mm. or speech things (laughs) that comics I had drawn. So it's been a whole lot of my voice combined with his voice. That's cool. And his energy. Um, when and I've we... met I've met Robbie before, <laughs> and uh, on several occasions, and he he can fire out like hilarious moments. He's a character of his own. Like there's Kid President as, as a character, and then there's Robbie the character, <laughs> and he, he is uh, bold and and he's the kind of kid who goes into a restaurant and it's almost like he, you'd think he's the manager the way he's talking <laughs> to everybody. When we film, I have these anchor points that are scripted that are we have to have this this is what we want to say to the world yeah and then in the middle i have these spots where i ask him questions and it's not where i'm trying to teach him anything i want him to teach me Mm. so i'll have him just i'll I'll just say okay what does it mean to be a good grown-up what does it mean to what should people say to people they don't know um and and from that combining the scripted with the unscripted you get a really natural performance, and, and it's not like um, uh, a child actor you see. Um, instead, it feels natural, because it really yeah. is just the two of us hanging out. That's amazing. Yeah. You mentioned that the things in the Kid President video, you've been saying for years, you know, since you were in the fifth grade. Obviously, the stuff that you share with Kid President is so wise and hopeful and fun and quirky and, like, do you feel like there was something that inspired that like back in the day? Is there like, I guess what I'm asking is what formed the Brad that became the Brad that I know today? <laughs> well, I was always a super weird kid and didn't know what to do with the That's weirdness. That's the best. <laughs> and did not know what to do with the weirdness. I will look at pictures and just think, oh, you poor weirdo. <laughs> like, I just want to hug you and tell you it's going to be okay. There are other weirdos. It's okay. <laughs> But I I was very sensitive, and I was very drawn to uh, creators like um, Jim Henson, and uh, especially Fred Rogers was was um, stayed my hero and has has stayed yeah. my hero. Um, but I, I loved what how they created these original worlds and then shared hope with the world, and um, so that was always something I wanted to do. I drew comics that I put in our school newspaper. I created little plays that our teachers would would let us perform for some reason. I don't know why, but it was those loving, caring adults who didn't look at me as a weirdo, but instead uh, saw this weirdness as wonderful and helped Amazing. me helped me learn how to polish that, uh, which I'm still still struggling with. Well, you're still you're still striving towards and working at, but like you you've polished a lot of what like in a beautiful way, like the stuff that you've created is out there in the world and it looks amazing and it feels amazing. And I love that. And so 
kid president came along and what was your, you know, I'm sure it started off as like, okay, cool. Like we want this to be a video that goes out there, but it grew and it evolved and it blew up. And as it blew up, like when things grow and things blow up, you have to kind of set a trajectory. Otherwise you're just going to go where everybody wants you to go. Mm -hmm. What was like the path that you decided like, this is what kid president is about. This is what our lives are going to be about right now. Because we've been doing it for four years now, that um, has evolved. But at the core, the truth of what we want to do has not changed. Um, when we first started, it was just out of joy, just simple joy, a hand grenade of happiness. We're going to throw out online and see what happens. And then when people began to respond, it was clear that this was there was something more going on and that there was something about he and I working together that, that we could put something special to share with people. Um, and then when um, Rain Wilson, who was Dwight on The Office and then he created Soul Pancake. I love Rain so much. Yes. Uh, he uh, is, is a total goofball, but yet has such a big heart and was wanting to create space online for people to do meaningful things. And um, so we had, we teamed up and said, how could we, with just a few episodes of this kid pretending to be president, what could we do and say in the world for just, let's just do 10 episodes together. And that was the original idea because it was in the middle of the election. Let's just do these 10 and just take a very complicated world and simplify it in a way that points people towards what actually matters. Hmm. So not simplifying, not oversimplifying to where it's just saying everything's fine and dandy yeah. and cupcakes and happiness. <laughs> it, instead, there's there's a, a, a depth to that that's saying um, there's a whole lot that we're focusing on that doesn't matter. Here's what actually matters. And when the child says it, people will listen. So that was the idea for those first 10 with Soul Pancake. And so I tried really hard to, to craft those um, and make them each matter, but at the mm. same time have this fictional character interacting with the real world. So we had him uh, have this um, feud with Josh Groban. We had him have <laughs> these, these things happening in the real world just to play with the idea of YouTube and creating change in the real world. Yeah. And then we had this video that was just about encouraging people. And it was a pep talk and it became a runaway train. And that was the moment we realized that people needed even more. Mm. And um, the more personal I got with the videos, the more people responded. Wow. And so that, that video was, we had never done one where Kid President broke away from the desk. We had never done one where uh, I scripted every bit of it. We had never done one where I, I mean, we had it rehearsed down to this track and I had asked if we could use that and had it all pieced together because I wanted, I thought it would be like the last one. So I poured a lot of heart into it and not so it would go viral, but so that the audience who'd been with us would, would see that we actually meant everything we'd said before. Yeah. Because uh, we repeated some things that had been in other videos um, but then what happened, it became the first video a it lot of Yeah, it really saw. became the, the start. And um, that then changed everything because suddenly everybody had somewhere they wanted us to take this. Mm. Everybody had something. They were like, oh, we could get this kid to sell shoes. We could get this kid to do this. We could get this kid to sell Pop-Tarts. We could get this kid to do <laughs> – like instead of I think we need a pep talk, he could say I think we all need a Pop-Tart. And I was like, <laughs> What? <laughs> And I know you've dealt with this too. Yeah. Uh, um, but it became a circus. Um, and uh, so much so now that um, whenever I see a video pop up online and I know that everybody in the world's watching it right now, um, I immediately try to find the person and contact them mm. and tell them I don't need anything. I just want to tell you. I love you. You're fine. That's <laughs> don't, good. You don't have to do anything. Like, don't. Don't say yes to anybody. Just keep making what you make because it's beautiful. <laughs> and, uh, and so uh, we've kind of formed this little support group. That's and I do good. that because um, there was a video that had gone viral about a year before the Kid President Pep Talk, uh, Kane's Arcade. 
Yeah. Uh, so I good. I remember that. The, yeah. the kid made this beautiful cardboard arcade, and people lined up around the block to go and visit it. It was wonderful. It was incredible. And the filmmaker behind that, he reached out to me in the midst of mm. the circus, and he just said, a lot of people want stuff from you right now. Just keep your love for that kid at the front and, and keep making stuff. Cause it's beautiful. beautiful. And, um, and so th- that was just exactly what I needed. And so ever since we've been like this little support group of that's great all right chewbacca mom here you go and we, <laughs> everybody any anything like that 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 okay let's let's let them know man because they're going to be under attack man that's i i think that's really important because things you can lose sight of what you came in and started to do and i know that i've experienced that in the past and you know you've got to get back on that path and be like this is what i'm working for but also along the way like you haven't had to say no to everything. You've had some really fun opportunities come your way. What are some of like the most exciting things to you that they came your way? Like you met Beyonce, you met the president, like, (laughs) yeah, well, it's really wild. I made this list of things I wanted to have happen, uh, way before kid president of just things in life. I wanted to happen. Like I want to go to the white house and, and just I just wanted to eat a meal there or something. Yeah. You know, one of those meals that every somehow people just get to go. I thought maybe one day a friend I know, yeah, <laughs> go to the White House and be like, you know, Brad, here's a tie. You can come <laughs> I just wanted that to happen. I, I wanted to 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 meet Steve Martin at some point. I, I wanted to touch a Muppet, and that sounds more offensive than I meant. <laughs> it, but I wanted to just see a Muppet in real life and. I had this long list of things, and and over and over and over, those dreams have, have mm. come true, and and it, I see my life observing the absurdity of of what's happening, and knowing that there's something bigger going on, but it's it's been really remarkable. Uh, but the breaking point was maybe not meeting the president, but it was it was seeing Grover. Wow, <laughs> Grover in person just broke me. I I cried. <laughs> I could not take it. It was like a kid seeing Santa Claus, and oh they're just like, gosh. "Wait, every what? He's here!" Um, yeah, I, I couldn't talk. Uh, it was, it was <laughs> just too much. And it was just because it was embedded in you since you were a child. Is it that? I think so. It, it was. I've always adored the Muppets, and then there was Grover, and he knew my name. <laughs> 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 but um, I had the great chance to speak to um, an, an older man who's like in his 90s. And he was telling me he's very young and I acting. And I was like, what's the secret? And he said, I've always had dreams. Mm. <laughs> and I was like... That's that's really. Beautiful. I would love to be an old man that says that that, yeah. that I've always had dreams, and even now he's still dreaming about this cool stuff he's gonna do. That's incredible. So where I'm at now, all these incredible dreams have come true. My homework now is to dream better dreams mm. because I want to be old. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I have lots of dreams, but I, what else might could happen? What other beautiful things could happen in the world? To continue doing that, to yeah. keep that 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 wonder. And that's the beautiful thing is the dreams. Like, so you had a dream and it was kid president and these beautiful things came out of it. And some of those things are high profile things. And some of the things I know we've talked before, like a lot of those things are behind the scenes, like behind the scenes, quiet things that people will never know about. And, you know, with your future dreams, you could never meet another president. You could never meet another Muppet. And I have no doubt that like that would still keep you young and fulfill you and fill the world with beauty in all kinds of ways. And I think that's an exciting place to be. So much of what Kid President is, is um, a vision of a kid who has a dream of being president, but is president now. Mm. (laughs) He's doing his thing. And behind the scenes, we have this big dream for, it's me trying to learn what Robbie's dreams are and trying to project to him my dream for him, that I dream of this man you could be. Hmm. And, um, and so that, that's been the process behind the scenes of um, we're not 
making a brand. This is our family, and this is our our family project. Um, and so, the heart behind all the decisions we've had to make are okay. What is our dream for who he is going to be and who we are going to be as a family? And um, um, that can be tough. Okay, so what's next for Kid President? Okay, well, we're at this point now where we are wrapping up his time as Kid President. Yeah, I mean, you can't stay in office forever. Sure. There's laws. There's laws. (laughs) uh, There's uh, childhood ends. Yeah, I mean, he would have to become Teen President, which I'm sure is a thing, but... (laughs) (laughs) There's a sadness to that. (laughs) Um, And it could be interesting in its own right, but... Uh, It's time for him to transition to civilian life, and um, we're going to see what that looks like. The honest answer, we're still figuring it out. I had this whole final season scripted out of what I wanted to happen for the final episodes of Kid President, and it just feels false to change up how we've done it in the past. Mm. Instead, I, I... What's worked about the show is is when it's he and I having fun together and to overthink it or to change it up in the last home stretch um, wouldn't be fitting. Instead, it's okay. We have eight episodes remaining of you in the suit. What do we want to say to the world? What are our final things? And so that's been our, our project. For him, he's most excited about not wearing the suit. That's amazing. <laughs> like hanging out, shooting, us being together. We both still love that. For him, it's like uh, putting the tie on. And it's a clip on. <laughs> <laughs> One day he's going to go to prom and he's going to be like, screw this. I'm not wearing a suit. Like He's going to show up in cargo shorts. Same with like his wedding day. <laughs> That'll be like the one like side of like a lot of people have like problems from like being child actors, but like that'll be his only one. His one, yeah, that's <laughs> I, yeah, that's our hope. Like it's just uh, no suit, no suit. I mean, he loves when. Okay, can we? Is this one just me behind the desk? Because I'm not wearing pants, <laughs> <laughs> dude. You have to wear pants. Ugh. Um, so we're wrapping up that chapter and um, excited to dream about what what lies ahead, man. And so what's been going on for you? Brad outside of the kid president world in the last year or so. Cause I know that you're you know, like one of my favorite things is following you on Snapchat or on Twitter and you'll write a poem, you know, like <laughs> little stuff like that where I'm like, this is, uh, it's just so amazing. Like it just makes me so happy. But so I know that you're putting your energy and your creativity into things that are not strictly a child who is the president of the United States on YouTube. Like what's going on? I've been making a lot of things out of survival um, and not like survival for money, but just survival because this is like something I have to yeah. say. This is something I have to do. Was, um, we started Kid President out of that. Like this, we just, we can't comment on this election. We just have to put something out joyful. So we've approached that same thing of, I just have to draw this bird and write a poem. And so um, I've been doing that. Um, but aside from we did a, a tour where we got to go into classrooms hmm. and to be around students just, it was like oxygen to, to hear their ideas, to hear them laughing, to hear, to watch the videos with them instead of me being tethered to a laptop editing and yeah. working on something to actually watch them with an audience. And then beyond that, see how these kids were engaging with the ideas. We had a video that was, how to change the world. And it has three questions in it. Um, and to see these students take those ideas and and they had even better ones than I'd put in the video, it was so exciting to me. And so I've been doing a Skype tour of classrooms and it just launched a, a listening tour. I and love this so much. <laughs> I saw this on Facebook. The idea is is just, I don't want to say anything to these kids. I just want to hear what they have to say. Mm. And, and, and then the more I thought about it, this, th- that's why I do what I do because there were grown-ups who listened to me. There, there were people who, who let me know my voice mattered. Um, so what if we did a project that was just all about elevating the voice of kids? So we've been Skyping with third, fourth, and fifth grade classrooms. The and best. we've had over 500 people respond now. 
Um, and so we're sorting that out. But we have a classroom in every state and on every single continent. That's unreal. <laughs> I want to talk to those Antarctica kids. Ugh. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> come on, come on in. We've got uh, uh, one classroom it was a school for the blind, and mm. it was a powerful experience to be on Skype with them and to have them not see me, but I felt like they saw me more than anyone else. They they were listening to me in a way that was different than the other, other kids. And to hear their ideas and dreams and hopes was just... That's beautiful. Just, I mean, this is what I want to do when I grow up. Uh, just just listen to these kids. I got to play ukulele with a group of, uh, of, of fifth grade ukulele club. <laughs> um, I got to talk to one group of kids who were in their lunchroom and they were telling me all about these crazy things that had happened in that lunchroom. And I've been asking what they're afraid of. And and one question I ask all kids is, how could I be a better grown-up? And it's really incredible what they project onto me, of what they say. And they, 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 they've, like, they've been waiting for a grown-up yeah. to say, oh, I'll tell you. What, I want to know. <laughs> what are they saying? So they've been saying a lot of things about um, how I should uh, – uh, <laughs> <laughs> I like how it's not we should. It's like no, how Brad me directly should. me directly. And it's it's, uh, it's obviously something that that they've seen their parents do that they want fixed. Yeah, or they've been wanting to. So they they keep saying that I shouldn't pat them on their heads. Uh, they don't like <laughs> kid, grown ups when the grown ups pat them on the heads. They've been saying that uh, I should uh, eat better, which is a fact. Um, they've been been saying I uh, should be um, nicer to other grown-ups I should take care of animals this comes up a lot Mm -hmm. they have a lot of ideas about how grown-ups should spend their money huh and that's been interesting to me because I I didn't know much about money as, as a kid but to hear them that's something a lot of kids have brought up so far now I've not been in every state yet I've not listened to every kid but so far those are the things that, that they've, they've brought to the table. I love that. And a lot of them also affirm things they like about the time they spent with me. Mm. And, and kids are very generous with criticism, and they're generous with compliments. They're just generous in general. <laughs> and <laughs> and it's, it's, it's all helpful. Where do you think that this passion for kids comes from? Because I know that Kid President started really like before you even had kids. And it's so much of what you do is in this world. And then I know that you also admired like incredible people like Fred Rogers and, and people who made things for kids, but like, I don't have this exact same passion. And I, yeah, I'd love to know like, w- w- why is this trajectory what you're heading down? If that even makes sense. Yeah. I've always felt that childhood was this transformative time that everybody goes through and we don't all talk about it. Mm. And, and so I used to be afraid of certain grownups and then I would think, Oh, they probably were a kid one time. Mm. And then suddenly they seemed more approachable. They seemed softer. And so that always helped get me through when I was afraid of a certain football coach (laughs) as a kid or (laughs) afraid of a certain teacher or someone I would just think about, Oh, they used to be a kid and okay, that's okay. But then now I more and more think about that and think about the fact that who we are told we are as a kid, how much that informs who we become and, and what a great responsibility we have to make sure all kids know just how, how loved they are and just by being who they are. And then to see that that's exactly what Fred Rogers did uh, to me and, and to so many other kids. It's like, oh, he already did this. That's beautiful. <laughs> I was talking to um, one of my heroes and mentors, Dr. Alice Wilder, who uh, has worked on a lot of children's programming. Um, She was part of what made Blue's Clues work. She did a lot of the research for Blue's Clues. Yes, yes. (laughs) You're nailing it. You're nailing (laughs) it. And then we can do the mail time song. (laughs) You can do... I don't know what else I know for Blue's Clues. You're the new Steve. Oh, my gosh. (laughs) Steve. Um, she she works at uh, Amazon Kids now and still d- dedicated to making great programming for kids. And she was talking about when she watched the movie Big, Tom Hanks, uh, 
Yeah. The moment when Tom Hanks is in the boardroom and he's a kid and uh, but he looks like a grown up and, <laughs> and he's at the table and he just keeps raising his hand going like, but why? I don't get it. I don't get it. Why would why would a kid like that? And she said that was like, that's what I want to do. I want to be the voice for kids in a room. Beautiful. Who just says, I, I don't get it. <laughs> and so I, I think that's that's such a needed voice at a table to have a kid at a grown up's table that can just say, eh, I don't get it. What's the special thing that kids have that grown ups have lost? Uh, wonder, absolute wonder. Joy is where they start. Joy is is who they are at their base level. It's just joy all the time. Um, honesty, and even though they're still not nuanced enough to handle their emotions, they're at least honest with them. And to see them be honest about fear and be honest about being uncomfortable with things, we can learn a lot from that. Um, but even just recently seeing my, uh, my son, who's three, was just blown away by the fact that he could feel the wind on his face but couldn't see it. Wow. And, and he kept talking about it and trying to explain <laughs> that to other people like they hadn't quite grasped that. And I, I, just, I just don't want to lose that, um, that magic. Man, that's beautiful. <laughs> the wind, he couldn't, it was, um, it, I don't want him to forget that, that that was, I, I, I don't want him to get older and forget the time that the wind yeah. blew his face and he, he just got, gets used to it. It's like, oh, yeah, the wind, it just does that. Like, <laughs> but more and more, uh, when you see the world through the eyes of a kid, you you can't just walk around and be like, "Oh yeah, that's uh, that's what the sun does. It just goes around us. So we <laughs> or we go around it. I don't you know whatever. Uh, it, it, that's that, that's one way to walk your life. Uh, a, a far better one is to be amazed. Mm. You saying the word magic reminds me of a poem you wrote uh, about yeah. hiding your magic yes. and not more. More importantly, not hiding your magic. Yeah, don't hide your magic. Do you think that, first of all, I really want to ask you to recite it, but I would imagine. Yeah, so I was, so that poem came about with a perfect storm of stuff. I, I was asked to, to speak to a group of third graders at a lower income school. And they just, the teacher said, they just feel really beat down. And, and so I kept thinking about what I was going to share with them. And I thought, well, what if I didn't treat them as kids, but it's, it's instead of like wizards, <laughs> and then just tr- talk to them like they're wizards who have these amazing powers and abilities, which they do. And their response was really, 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 um, their response was, was one that was really emotional and one where they, they wrote res- uh, these little essays about what kind of magic they had that, that nobody had seen. And... And then at the same time, I got asked to speak at an event that was all these people I looked up to online and did not feel like I was in their ballpark. And I was like, I can't do this. And I had written this for a group of kids, but realized I had actually needed it myself. And so I posted it online to share with people. And then the response grew even more where Mm. other people began to share Hey, here's um, here's my magic. A, a, a couple of people wrote songs uh, about the poem. There's a whole school that does a poetry slam on "Don't Not Hiding Your Magic." Wow, um, it's been really cool to see it grow. Um, but this is um, "Don't Hide Your Magic." Please share your gift. Seeing you shine gives the whole world a lift. It's okay for wizards to be quiet or shy, but hiding your magic is a crime. And here's why: the room needs to dazzle. We need what you've got. You might think that you're nothing, but really you're not. You're more. You're magic. It's time to be seen. You're more powerful than you know and more loved than you can dream. So when you feel less than or that you don't count or small or your soul is all flooded with doubt, remember your gift. You're equipped. You're prepared. And never forget, your magic is meant to be shared. Uh, I love that. I love that so much. Oh, that's beautiful. Um, and some kids wrote, some of the responses were really heartbreaking to see things that kids had 
been afraid to share. Um, but some of them were hilarious. It's like, <laughs> I'm, I sing like a diva, and I haven't <laughs> shared that. And, and, um, but they were honest. And, and then to realize that I needed that too. And we were talking just before the podcast about uh, speaking at this event. There's these like super cool people, really extreme, are going to be there. And I was like, what am I going to do? And uh, you gave me good advice. You just told me to pretend to be like them. <laughs> <laughs> That's terrible advice. No, you didn't. You didn't. You gave me. You, you encouraged me. <laughs> I had something to bring to the table. You really do. You encouraged me, Brandon. Well, and speaking of you having something to bring to the table, I want to go back a few months ago. I was in total crisis mode. I was making this decision, and I had to like make this decision on. There was basically a really fun opportunity that was presented to me, and it would come at a cost and. And I was kind of freaking out thinking, should I say yes to this opportunity or should I sit it out this time? And it was like 11 p.m. And I just had a hard phone call and I knew I had to make the decision the next day. And so I was like, who? I need someone to talk to right now. And so 11 p.m., I direct message you, Brad. And I'm like, Brad, what's your number? Can I call you and ask you for some advice? And I have no idea what you're doing on the other end of the line. Like you probably were asleep or something, but I, I got a DM back with, with your number and I called you and I just kind of poured my guts out and was like, here's what's going on. And you and I had met like, I mean, we had Bollywood dance, so <laughs> yeah, we, we were tight. obviously best friends, tight. but, uh, but at the same time, like we hadn't spent a ton of time together, but I just knew that you'd be the right person. And you offered this story to me mm. and it was the story of Michael Jordan and Space Jam and, <laughs> and some kid president thrown in. And I was, I was hoping you could offer that advice again and, uh, and tell me the Space Jam story. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> I have a, a, a little beeper by my phone, by my bed that goes off when um, you're, you, you need help. <laughs> <laughs> and so I, and you'd been you'd installed it years earlier, right? And it was only then it that it waiting. buzzed. <laughs> but it buzzed, and no, you you know, you're a smart, dude. You you know, and yet I, all I knew was that I needed to help remind you who you are, hmm. <laughs> because you you had a big decision to make. It was a super cool opportunity, but. You also really are building something wonderful with your family, like y y your relationship with Sammy, like that's your number one, you know. And so I knew that, but you you were trying to figure out what to do, and uh, well, I've been learning some of the things that we've said in Kid Present videos. I still like, but I, I would say them differently now, like in the pep talk. It was supposed to be super encouraging. One of the things it leads up to is about doing awesome stuff. And so it's like, what if Michael Jordan had quit? Then he would have never made Space Jam. <laughs> Which is a fantastic <laughs> concept because it's like, I mean, it's that old story. Like everybody knows the story of like Michael Jordan got cut from his basketball team in high school. And if he had quit, then he never would have gone to the NBA. But I like that in the kid's mind, it's like, that doesn't matter. Like that dude was retired before I was. Uh, right. One of the greatest basketball players of all time. <laughs> he also saved Earth from, with the Looney Tunes. Okay. So much more important. Um, hello. So he would have never made Space Jam. So then it's a funny joke. But then at the end, it said, you know. What will be your space jam? Uh, what will you create to make the world more awesome? And at the time, I thought that's a perfect line. I've since been learning that it's silly to think that your space jam is one thing that you do or make for the world. I made a video that's been seen by over 35 plus million human beings. And Which is nuts. What, I don't know. What do you do with that? Is that my space jam? I, I hope not. And and for you, you do these incredible things in the world. You get invited to so many places. You um, have a lot of things that you could see and, and give false importance to and say, oh, that's my space jam. This is so important. When the truer thing is that your life is your space jam. 
That sounds so stupid. <laughs> this is my favorite metaphor I've ever heard. But your life is not one thing. You, this it's not one thing you present to the world. It is your the story of your existence here, the relationships, the, the meaning, the 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 love that you pour into the people around you. That's the good stuff. That's the Space Jam. And in my mind, I think I had been making that opportunity. I I was like, this is my Space Jam. This is my chance. And by talking with you, it, it gave me this. I was able to breathe in deep and be like, this isn't the crux of my existence. Like, this is this could be a small part of my Space Jam. But as soon as I realized that it wasn't the whole thing, I was able to say, well, I don't know if I need that to make my Space Jam. Like, I'll be fine letting that go, even though it's amazing. I can let it go because I can make my Space Jam in a different way. Yeah. Uh, and and you are. There's just so many decisions we make that we we think, oh, this one thing, this is it. This is the thing. When in reality, it's, it's, um, it's a bunch of other decisions you make every day to, mm. to love people, to love yourself so you can love even more people like it's that's that's where where the good story starts and 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 grows you recently had a little bit of your own what's your space jam moment it seems and you can also totally <laughs> shut me down if you're like i don't want to talk about this but um but you were invited to it's have fresh. A, it's too is fresh. it too fresh you don't want to talk about fresh. it we can yeah, you were invited to the Olympics, uh-huh. it seems. Uh-huh. Um, and Not you, to compete, mind not you. <laughs> <laughs> if you guys look up pictures of Brad on uh, Google Images, you'll see that he has quite the athlete's body. Yes, uh, yes. Straight out of a Michael Phelps <laughs> machine. I don't yeah. know, Michael <laughs> Phelps cloning machine. There we go, that's a better joke. Um, <laughs> but so you and Robbie, kid president, were invited to the Olympics for, for an opportunity. Right. And you ended up saying... No. No. And that's and hard to do. It uh, was heartbreaking. It was hard. It was the it was terrible. And, and at the end of the day we're like, okay, there are real problems in the world. <laughs> <laughs> like, this is not a problem. Um, this is a great problem to have to just say, okay, we're not going to the Olympics. Like, <laughs> you know, like, come on. <laughs> this is so not a problem, but it was hard to because originally we we were we were led to believe this was going to be a great opportunity. It was going to involve us being able to give the opportunity to lots of well-deserving kids to go to Rio with us. We had a part that would be in the opening ceremony. Oh my <laughs> gosh! Talk about it. You're, you're going to start crying. And we, we it, it, this had progressed to the point where we were getting close to um, getting plane tickets and and the like and then it, it turned into where they they wanted um quickly realized that the story they wanted to tell with this visit was not about these kids who were doing beautiful things in the world and that compassion and creativity of young people that that was what was driving us they wanted them to get pictures with hamburgers mm. and it just got blatant that we're like no 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 this is what we want and um it was heartbreaking. We were all super excited, but we, we had to uh. yeah, say no. <laughs> and saying no is so I didn't watch the Olympics oh. this year. I couldn't. I just couldn't. But I it's couldn't. I'm proud of you for saying no though, because saying no is one of the hardest things to learn to do. And I know I've been learning that. Um, and I know you've taught me that, but it still it still stings. We've said yes enough to things that I've felt later were a little bit more of a compromise than than should have yep it's in my nature to to want to make people happy like we get all these emails and and people wanting things and it became really hard for me to suddenly be going no sorry no sorry no so occasionally i would say yes just because i was tired of saying no (laughs) but i learned the hard way that 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 just leads to more pain and and um, so sometimes those big things come through and fall through your hands and and I was most proud of how Robbie responded in that moment because I had to explain to him, hey, remember the Olympics you were super excited about? Yeah, I'm not doing that. 
and he was he was so grown up in his response of being really upset about it, but also feeling like, well, yeah, of course we're not going to do that. And that made me feel like, okay, this was not, this entire project has not, we've not failed him. Um, he, he's, he's okay. It's cool that from his brilliant child mind, he was able to see it for what it was. And he was able to see, mm-hmm. well, you know, it's fine. Yeah. And, That's and, cool. Um, Still a little sore about it. <laughs> <laughs> nice thing is there's not any more Olympics for two more years, so hopefully by then good. you'll heal. Good, good, good. Yeah. Good. <laughs> and I can train. Before. And you can train, yeah. And you can you can compete in the next ones. That's that's how I plan to attend the next one. <laughs> <laughs> there's so there's so many uh, yeah. little little competitions that surely one of them Honestly, I could figure out. I feel like you and I could really like we could be a bobsledding team. Mm. We could be mm. or the one with the the broom before the uh, hockey stick. I, I I I feel like that can't take a whole lot of skill. <laughs> yeah, just, oh, just a can-do spirit. Just a can-do spirit. Yep, you and me. We're gonna start training. <laughs> Goodbye, internet. Hello. <laughs> Twelve hours of training a day. And then, Brad, I want to transition into this part where every single episode, I love to ask my guests a few questions that are just some of my favorite questions to ask. And so my first question is this, how would you describe the kind of person that you most admire in the world? Mm, They are wise and they have eyes full of wonder, wisdom, wonder, and whimsy. Those are the three things Mm. that I'm on a quest for. And over and over, these people that have been my heroes have that. Um, you look at someone like Desmond Tutu. <laughs> like, yeah, that guy embodies all of those things. Beautiful. Uh, he, he he giggles nonstop, and yet he can say these things that are so profound. Um, and and so that's the kind of kind of old dude I want to become. That's incredible. I want to I want to hammer into this a tiny bit more, and I want to ask, who are some of your role models? We've talked about a few already, and I could probably guess some more. But, like, you're emulating people in such a beautiful and powerful and important way. Who are the people that you desire to be? <laughs> like a Mount Rushmore of heroes. <laughs> um, I think for the l- longest time, I just kept looking at these people that I admired in childhood and then would get a little let down finding out they're not the best dudes. Um, and, you know, I'd, I'd say Fred Rogers is one that has not let me down and uh, continues to inspire me. I got to spend some time at the Fred Rogers Center and um, with this, the Fred Rogers Scholars and seeing kind of the, the legacy there, what's happening. But even he had these, these had faults and had things. And, and so I, I think... Now I'm at a point where I, I want to hopefully be more Brad and less of any of my heroes. And, That's and, good. And hopefully I'm finding my own voice more and more. That's really, really good. My next question is this. What are you consuming that you love right now? Mm, uh, we're watching and re-watching over and over The Little Prince on Netflix. Amazing. It's so good. It's really good. So good. Um, I love that my son has fallen in love with the story, too. We have a pop-up book of the, of the story. And, and I'm also reading aloud to him the BFG. Oh, fun. And so we've been getting into Roald Dahl. Man, I, Roald Dahl was one of my favorite uh things to read when I was in elementary school. I remember that and I haven't I haven't read any of that in so long. They're they're even better now. Danny and the Champion of the World. Dan- Danny the Champion of the World um, is uh, perfect. So still. good. My final question is this. Based on the ways you've chosen to step out and live your life differently, what's one thing you'd encourage someone else to do in their own life? So one thing I have had to learn and I'm still learning but that I feel is key is learning to be able to look in the mirror and love that person hmm. 
because we talk a lot about loving other people, doing things for others, doing these great things in the world, but realizing just how lovely you are is really powerful. And um, I heard someone say that if you assume the person you're speaking with is hurting, then 95% of the time you'll be right. Mm. So I've approached people with more compassion, understanding that about myself. It's helped me understand others. So there's a thing in a kid, kid present, several kid present videos I put that's treat everybody like it's their birthday. And that's because um, I've learned I have to do that to myself so I can treat everybody else like their their existence matters, <laughs> that their birth is worth celebrating every day too. That's really good. So would you say that your advice is to treat everybody like it's their birthday or treat everybody like they're hurting or are those synonymous? I'd say treat everybody like it's their birthday, even yourself. That's good. Even yourself. I hesitate to say especially yourself. Yeah. I think that's important. I think that we're the most critical to mm-hmm. ourselves. Because ev- everything we do and make is either out of love or it's out of a desire for love. Mm. It's out of like wanting people to love us. Yeah. So if you can truly do things out of just pure love, then you're in a good spot. And so more and more I'm learning to realize how loved I am so that I can love others. So you are so loved. (laughs) That's what I would want. That's what I would want to say to 10 year old me and to any other person, I want to hug them, <laughs> tell them they're loved. That's absolutely beautiful, Brad. That makes sense. Absolutely makes sense. I said a lot of nouns and verbs, and the, the combinations of them don't always come <laughs> together. And adverbs. Oh. I don't know what what an adverb even is. Oh man, um, Brad, this has been seriously so freaking good. It's been fun to be with man, you. It's been so good. If people want to follow along with. I mean, everybody can Google Kid President. They know how to do that. If people want to follow along with you and see your poems and see your work and see the beauty you put out in the world, where can they do that? I'm on Twitter, at the Brad Montague, M-O-N-T-A-G-U-E. I'm also, uh, we have a website, montagueworkshop.com. That's where my wife and I are making stuff. I love that you're emulating Jim Henson, right? (laughs) Yeah, the Sesame Workshop, Jim Henson Workshop. It's so good. Geppetto had a workshop. Yeah. All the great people have workshops. Man, I'm changing the name of my studio to be my workshop. That's so much better. (laughs) You have a a detective agency. That's even better. (laughs) Oh, man. I I don't know if I've told the podcast folks about that yet. You guys, I have a detective agency, and it's going to be all over the internet soon. I think we should tell them here. I, I show up at his office here. And dude's sign, it says detective agency. <laughs> it's so awesome. It says undercover. I have all these crimes I need solved. Part-time podcaster, part-time crime solver. I've got your back, Brad. That's a great idea. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Man, y'all, go follow Brad on the internet. Brad, seriously, thank you so much for coming mm-hmm. out today and for eating thank food you. with me and talking with me. And I'm leaving refreshed and lighter and... I'm so thankful for you. Well, thanks for being an enthusiast of life. Like you always are like so excited about things. It gets me excited about things good, too. Good. I, um, You've got, there's a you lot to a be gift. excited about. You have a gift. Man, well, on that note, Brad, thank you. Thank you. Sounds Good with Brandon Harvey is part of the Gradient Podcast Network and is created in collaboration between me, Brandon Harvey, and Gradient. Check them out at gradient.is. That's gradient.is. Thank you so much to each and every one of you who tuned into the podcast this week. If this is your first time listening, subscribe to the show to get a new inspiring story downloaded straight to your phone in your sleep every single Monday. If you really connected with this episode, let's totally talk about it. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram with the username at Brandon Harvey. That's Brandon with an E-N. And with that, that's a wrap for this week's podcast. I'll see you online and I'll talk to you next week when we get the opportunity to learn from another inspiring person. Sound good?